Cindy flips and gets in for three damage through the air. Third land for Helmick. So the first of many insectile aberrations are on the weekend we would oh, imagine. Judge Blairs! Side event, standard number six, win a box! Your side event's about to start. Please come up to the side event table by the whiteboard. Whatever it was, it got mana leaked. Very much denied by Very Mr. Gindy. Much denied. So we hit in for another three from Gindy. And that's the thing, the tempo starts so early in the blue white decks. Not only did Gindy what? win uh, Pro Tour Hollywood in 2008, he is your hottest player in Magic right now in the sense that he won last weekend in Atlanta with pretty much the list that he's uh, running right now. You wouldn't consider Raph Levy hot? Oh, very much so. Okay. So there's Solemn Simulacrum from Helmick. Jan Thorin Invitational Car from back in the day. Clearly the uh, the classic version that you play with. If you're playing with it, you play with, a, with the Jens version. It's the, the extra style point. And Alan Comer would be uh, thoroughly pleased to see Heartless Summoning in the yes. house for Mr. Helmick. Uh, that's at the top of your screen. So he's basically heading towards a Sphinx, Sphinx of the Thun. He's got a Massacre Worm floating in there somewhere. There's an Entumor Exarch. Evil Twin, which is uh, lots of fun in Limited. He's going he's gonna to try to play some control against Gindy's little onslaught here. But... Lots of stuff through the air for Gindy. He's managed Midnight Haunting to get another two 1-1 one, one spirits into play. That fly. And so, I, I, th I think if Gindy is sitting on a counterspell here, I think this is this game is probably already all over. So Helmick will spend four and just whatever. It's like Black Sun Zenith. There's a mana leak. No, thank you very much. Yep. An absolute textbook. Right from I, about the only thing that wasn't perfect for Gindy there was that his Delver didn't flip on turn, turn one. He had turn to two. wait until hey, turn right. three. Right. But that seemed more than sufficient. By the way, he it isn't. Uh, you're not watching the Blue Man Group uh, here at Orlando, although <laughs> they are in Orlando. Um, and uh, you talked about the Circus of Magic. We have the the Ringling Brothers down yes. at the Amway Center, which is why the Orlando Magic are not here. So yep. we're the Magic in. We town are the Magic week. in Town. So. Gindy one up, and looking at Helmick's sideboard, we've got a couple of uh, death mark. There he is wading through. There's a, a dissipate, a couple of dismember. Well, that that potentially is uh, of use. There's the a skin, doom blade. The skin render. Ah, a couple of those. Also, may be a very very interesting choice. Get him some some value. Even if even if he's not killing something, he might be slowing something down. Life's finale um, is in his board. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not necessarily sure that's that's going to come in. It seems a little expensive. Just a little bit. So six, four black, black. Four black, black. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the the black sun zenith has the has the flexibility that he wants uh, to be able to kill a bunch of small dudes or anything that has gotten large and out of hand. The zeniths have been a good cycle for, for magic. That's, yes, I uh, agree. There's been uh, maybe the red one hasn't seen a lot of play in in many decks, but uh, it's obviously green is a massive staple. You see the black in control decks. People are playing white from time to time, and now currently we're going to see quite a few blue, blue ones right. this weekend, which is kind of new in the um, kind of Jerry Thompson when he made his control deck that um, had the pristine talisman in. Mm -hmm. uh, that had room and the time and the flexibility to get get to that. I, th um, I think that I think any any control deck. I mean, we're, most of the white decks we see today are more well more aggressive. Um, any control deck with white is going to love the white sun zenith because well, end of turn I'll make a bunch of guys who are going to come kill you next turn. Uh, looking at, uh, at at Helmet's sideboard. So this is, this is Gindy now. Oh yeah, sorry at, Gil at Gindy's sideboard. Um, a couple of revoke existence, timely reinforcements, while well, he's not going to really be behind in this one right. at any point. Oblivion ring, potentially, a couple of negate for 
uh, bone perhaps he counters something like heartless summoning I don't know yeah I, I think he's I think he's still on the mana leak plan yeah um, active aggression may be interesting so Helmet quickly finds himself in a 0-1 hole and will look at an opening grip of 7 he's going to keep Gindy looks at his on the right And looks like we are good to go. So Helmick will kick off, tap land. Gindy draws planes. And we are going to see a Gataxian Pro. Drawn cards. So you will get to have a good look at Helmick's hand. Solemn simulacrum down there. Indy writing everything down. Always a good plan. Don't just rely on your memory, however good it is. As long as you aren't, uh, as long as you're not slowing the match down. That's right. So Indy falls to 18 off his Phyrexian Manor. And then puts a Glacial Fortress into play. Again, tapped on turn one. Another tap land from Helmick. And Gindy with a, a steady start. He will ponder on turn maybe, two. Maybe even the start that he, he kind of wants to on uh, the draw. Mm -hmm. And he wants, he's, he's got the, he's got the extra card, the extra turn. Too. And information, of course. And, and of course the, the information. The probe. I mean, obviously the deck loves going first. Yeah. And another tap land. Interesting already, on both those turns, Gindy has done something before laying the land. That's something mm -hmm. that a lot of average players will just automatically play their land out straight away. But he's like, well, first of all, let's see what your hand is. Then I'll decide what land to play. Second turn, let's have a look what I'm going to do with Ponder. Then I'll decide what land to play. Never a rush. Right. I, I think I think less experienced players will tend to to hurry through their turn and, and, start, and kind of do things autonomically and instead of thinking... Hey, maybe this sorcery would be better to be played before I attack. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, no, it's a good idea to wait until after I attack. So there's Delva. And his brother. Indeed. Might as well turn them both on at once. Helmet gets up to four. And there's the this. ends. Yep. So, land number five comes down. One imagines that Indy will not consider the two to a roadblock because he will very quickly be flipping into insectile aberrations and crashing in for six. Let's see. Flip indeed. Now, if you are playing with cards like Delver of Secrets, you can either use checklist cards right. or do make sure your sleeves are, are opaque. Are, are opaque I mean, okay. is the keyword, isn't it? There he goes into the. There he goes into the red zone. Well, I suppose the red zone's not particularly red anymore, is it? We still we, we go <laughs> color blind. It doesn't matter whether it's black or gray. It's still red. So probe yet more information for Gindy. So who falls to sixteen? He's making Gindy's making very very good use of. Phyrexian mana. Um, I'm, I'm very interested to see if he has sideboarded in that active aggression to mm -hmm. to simply cast it for three uh, when Helmick comes out with something big to, to try to swing the tempo back his way. Gindy can then sort of throw that tempo back in his face. The thing is, in a matchup like this for Gindy, he knows that his life total is essentially a free resource because at the point at which Helmet takes control of the game and has a gigantic monster, Gindy will lose. Right. Uh, and whether he loses from 20 to 14 to 8 to 2 to dead or 12 to 6 to dead is really neither right. here nor there. Right. Um, and so he can freely go, yep, got shot away, I can 
Gitaxi and Probe away, I can right. find my active progression. It is a free resource. There's a little speed bump in Gindy's plan. He's having a little think about with his three mana. Helmick's certainly in much better shape here in game two. In fact, well, he's still playing game two, which right. means he's in better shape than game one, uh, which was over in uh, double quick time. Well, he was he was simply just on the ropes the entire game. Yeah. The games, the games are playing out almost exactly the way you'd expect for each deck to, to play out. I wouldn't feel good if I was sitting on Gindy's side at this point with Helmick with a big pile of mana and a handful of cards, even even knowing what those cards are in his hand. Sure. So another Yance. He's not really... Helmick isn't really uh, fearing an explosion out of Gindy, especially only with three mana. No. Um, and, you know, the even if he's got a big guy in his hand, the Yens is a safer play here. Again, due to that uh, act of aggression. Yeah. I don't know much about Helmick, so I don't really know whether that's something that he would sort of automatically contemplate as a possibility. It's like, right. You know, because one, one of the things about those Phyrexian mana cards is, you know, you, you sit there, you see a plains, you see two glacial fortress, you don't think about it. Gut shot, that's not right. the right color. You don't think about mutagenic growth, that's not the right color. Right. You don't think about active aggression, that's not the right color. Right. You know? So there's land number four for Gindy. Replays Delver. Yeah, Phyrexian mana has, has certainly changed the way we're forced to think about the game. Uh, you know, be before it existed, I saw colors, that's all I had to worry about. Now, Phyrexian Metamorph might come out of a red deck. Yep. It's also interesting how the acceleration in the blue-white decks has meant that uh, Dismember is now much less prevalent than it used to be, where you know, mono-green decks were packing it, mono-white decks were packing it, because you could quite happily just go, yeah, I'll, I'll pay. Right. Um, and, you, and a lot of the times, you can't really afford to do that anymore. And so Dismember is much less about. There was a point at which Frenzy Mana got quite a bad rap right. because of Dismember. It was like, oh man, everyone's playing this. And that's not true anymore. So Gindy now down to eight on the back foot, looking at double yens across the table, Solemn Simulacrum. The reprint of Solemn Simulacrum came out of. Was it M12. Someone? Okay. Was it one of the multicolored sets as well? Uh, the you know, multiplayer sets? Uh, it's in Commander. That's right, yeah. With the alternate art. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's in Commander with the uh, alternate art. So Gindy now suddenly, having been sitting on three land, is all the way up to six. But six is also his life total. And yeah. right now, really without doing an awful lot in this game, Helmick's in pretty good shape. And Helmick with a mana leak of his own. Which Gindy can pay. Again, we're, talk we're talking about tempo. If Gindy had planned on doing a two things on this turn, now he's got to make, not, a, cho he's gotta make a choice. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it is a Geist, right? Yeah, and he says, no, can't have that. Okay, it's gone. End of turn, flashback. From Helmick, who still has three cards in hand. Gindy sitting patiently on the right. But not looking good. Not looking good for Gindy at all. He's got a he's got that same sort of on the ropes feeling he was giving in game one. When you're when you're forced to block on uh, with like Gindy did in the last turn with your untransformed Delver, you you know that things are pretty bad for you. Yeah. 
That guy doesn't want to block ever. <laughs> so there's Helmick, who is getting ready, one presumes, uh, to win game two. Moreland Haunt uh, gets Gindy a token. 1-1 one, one Spirit. The difference, I, I think, the difference between the, the top flight player like Gindy and the casual player is top the, the the casual player probably a turn ago would have done what Gindy just did right there. Would have just scooped it up. Great players always find ways to bring victory out of desperate situations. Yep. You know, that's that's what makes them great players. The, I mean, you you and I can throw some cards down, put them in the red zone, and win. Uh, it's it's not winning the games that we should win. It's winning the games that we shouldn't win that separates us from the high level guys. And also, there are all kinds of tiny, tiny edges that don't necessarily result in a game win, but just oh, I saw one more card. Uh, oh right, he's playing that card that I thought he might have sideboarded out. Right, he kept right. that. And then you watch how they sideboard and they don't go back to their box between two and three and you go, right, so you are playing that still. Right. Uh, and you know you're going to be losing this game. So if you're not giving away the information but you're gaining some from them, why not? It's a, it's a thing that great players will do. They will continue to play in games that are otherwise lost. And uh, Gibney certainly not wor worried about the amount of time in the match. Oh yeah, not not at all. He knows he knows he's gonna he's gonna win in short order or not. So we're heading towards game three. We'll uh, try and get a chat with Charles Gindy after the match. See what's going on in Magic for him at the moment. Brian Kibler wanders by, not yet playing. He will start in round four. He's got an interesting deck. We'll tell you more about that. Um, he is certainly not playing Delver Mage. Um, out of our 32 that we've kind of picked at uh, scientific non-randomness, 13 are Delver Mage decks. Uh, but even within that, there's, there's some variety. So we'll bring you the standard metagame as the day goes on. Helmut and Gindy about to go for game three. And this time, Gindy will not want to go. Tap land, tap land. Correct. This time we'll want to see some action. He will, he will definitely... I, I think turn one Delver has to come out of his deck for him to win this match. Well, <laughs> conveniently enough, we're going to start off with a probe. Unless, so, uh, unless Helmick's hand is, is weak. I, I can't see a situation where Gimme, if, he, if he's got it in his hand, he probes first. I think, I mean, he, he has Delver turn one. He's, he's got to put the pressure on Helmick early and often to win this matchup. So he draws off the probe. All the cards go back in Helmick's hand. And then Gindy is going to ponder. So top three looks at his hand. Always a good tip. Keep the two well apart like yes. he has there. So yes, there's we... no, no confusion. So many people, because they're, they're, they're literally, they want to see what's there. and they, So they just bring them together in a kind of put my field of vision. And it's not good at all when it that is, happens. Is in, in the long run, that would not be good at all. Yeah. As soon as there's any confusion created in a situation like that, extra cards have gone into the hand, uh, a drawing extra cards penalty is going to get applied, and that brings a game loss with it, which sure. don't want to have at this, at this point. There's the Delver. So he found one for turn two. Turn two back the other way is your Heartless Listening. Summoning. Gindy has off the reveal. No flip. I believe it was a land. So there's land number three for Gindy. His first white source of the game. And 
for the first time in the weekend. The pike. See the Rune Chanter's Pike. So that can get out of hand. Uh, opinions vary on how good it is, uh, and that you need to get your instants and your sorceries into the graveyard, but then you look at Gindy's opening turn and he got Ponder and Gitaxian right. Probe in there before Helmick had even laid a land. So, you know, this is a case where the pike can get pretty big. Or big enough. It's not it's not uh, Imperial ar- the Imperial Armor of its day or anything. Oh, <laughs> what a card that was. <laughs> Deary me. So it costs two to equip the pike, and the creature gets first strike and plus X plus zero, where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. It's not all graveyards, just yours. You know, Gindy's Gindy's wit missed twice on the on the transform, which you can't be particularly happy with. Especially not now there's a roadblock in play. Right. Well, that pike would be big enough with the first strike to take out that Yens. But he, he may not want to do that. He may not want to block uh, to, to force Helmick into a blocking situation to get that extra land. Yeah. The heart of summoning means that Helmick's well within range now of his big guns. Of course, the Solemn Simulacrum just a 1 1 right now because of Heartless Summoning. So, what does Gindy do here? Well, he's gone into the tank for sure. Fourth land. And he is going to activate his Nexus, equip that, and he is going to go for the Infect route to victory. That is his current plan. That he's going, you're going to clog up the ground. That's, All a, right. that's an inter- that's an interesting plan. Um, so we get some poison. It was plus two plus naught because of pondering Taxian probe. So three damage with the poison variety. Of the you poison see our, variety. That, that nice green Phyrexian poison style graphic going on on the left at the bottom of your and screen. And we're ticking up. Yeah. Now we have three. Again, Helmic. Helmet with a pile of man- mana has to be a unsettling point for uh, Gindy. That looks like Frost Titan. Yes, indeed. Interesting that he tapped down the, the Delver in that situation. Mm-hmm. Gindy's now got his transform. Unfortunately, can't do much with it. The, aber- the aberration is a bit chilly. Got to pay two extra for that uh, if you want to send something at the Frost Titan. Titan's another fantastic cycle. Titan, it, it's an extremely well-designed cycle. I certainly wouldn't mind seeing, you know, another uh, variation on a theme. So, so perhaps two-color Titans, mm-hmm. like you know, a, a, a green-black one and a green-red one. If you didn't see on the website, uh, they've recently announced M13 uh, will be coming this summer, which everyone, of course, was expecting. But we now know that's out. I am guessing, and this is pure speculation, that having had two years of the Titans, we'll probably do a year off from them. So, I mean, I'd love to see them again because they're so much fun, and particularly for new players. Right. There, there, there is nothing more exciting than banging down your Inferno Titan and pumping some mana into it. Um, but I, I, I do wonder whether whether year three of them is, is going to be one year too far. We'll see. Well, they, they certainly haven't... They haven't necessarily dominated the standard format. Uh, they've been a significant part of it. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's they haven't been psychotic. 
Oh, and sure. So, if you're if you're completely if a, you know a, a card in standard, especially now with the one year rotation, comes where it's just omnipresent in the format, I can I can see a good argument for not bringing it into the next core set. Whereas popular cards, interesting cards, a lot of possibilities. And there he goes for tapping down the lane. Titans coming in. Titans are coming in. Looks less good for Gindy than it did a minute ago. And this has been an impressive turnaround by Helmick, who was battered in game one. Gindy still has his Nexus. That's Runchanda's Pike. Has a pretty exciting multicolored card in play and has a tap down insectile aberration, which at no point flew through the air for damage. Yeah, Gindy's, Gindy's definitely going to have to think his way out of this one as opposed to just plopping some cards down. He's, you can see he's, he's deep into the tank. Honda. Looking for answers. His uh, his first two plays, Probe and Ponder. I think Probe and Ponder also a British cooking show. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> right, so he left the three on top. So it draws into one. Looks like a Moorland Haunt coming down. Gindy really has the, has the gears turning here. Activating the Nexus. Battled only with it. Interesting. Does he... Does he does it, does it look like he has a sufficient defense to... I mean, he's, he's sitting at 12. And, but, of course, the, the Geist is hexproof. Which is a start. Right. Ah. And, it's, and it's big enough to kill a Titan if a Titan... I think he has four instants in his graveyard. I believe that's the case, yes. Instants and sorceries. Yeah. Oh. However... This is a bit of red hot black sun zenith action. <laughs> I suppose it would be black hot black, black sun zenith. Coal hot. There we are, I like that. That's why you brought me in. It's true. <laughs> and now just Rune Chandra's Pike in play for Gindy. Now he's still got that, that Nexus. Said, he's got a Nexus and he has a ton of instants and sorceries in the graveyard. I'm wondering where Helmick is going with this play. I, uh, we can't quite see his hand. Uh, seems like he already had a significant advantage with what was on the board. Gindy looks like he's asking about shuffling. It's like he's asking a judge about we don't we don't have a the feed. Yeah. But it's the whole upside upside or downside, so you can you can see as as we're going. Maybe there's a question about the Black Sun scene if going back in. Shuffling back in. Perhaps we'll get the... Uh, see if we can get a feed over there and see what's going on. We have a judge at the table for little issues. That's not something we provide at every table at the GP. There's a sizable judge contingent here, but not quite the... 470 we'd need. (laughs) 
judge the good sounds like a card got drawn before the zenith got shuffled back in so I see we are back into action and red zone action with Helmet piling in and your nexus will not be untapping so yes I guess that was his plan then yep just battle with the frost keep adding to the frost right and keep the nexus down force Gindy into getting further into his deck in order to do anything Once again, Gindy going deep. So, Gindy oh. says, I would like a phantasmal image, please. I'm going to think about that. Another beautifully designed card. Yes. Clone effects have always been fun. Well, clone, clone effects generally are... You, you get a lot of value out of them because the clone effect is cheaper than the big thing that the other guy does. So yeah. you spend six mana for a primeval titan... I only need to spend four mana to get a primeval thing. So, clone I, or three and two life with my Frexian Metamorph. So, our the copy copy effects especially are nicely priced. You can let the other guy spend big resources to do a thing, then just spend a little bit to do the same thing that he just did. Yeah. So we can see that Helmic has a mana leak sitting there. It's probably not relevant. Doesn't look like it. And Phantasmal Image will bite the dust. So Gindy untaps once again. Except for the Nexus. Looks like looks like a Moorland Haunt now that's tapped out. Looks like he's let let the the ink moth untap. I do believe. So, Gindy, nowhere near 19 damage. Nowhere near. Has Helmic at 4 poison. Unfortunately for Gindy, he's himself at 6. Staring down that prime time. Uh, excuse me, that uh, Frost Titan. Again, I think he's going he's gonna to have to play himself out of this situation. So there's land. He's obviously doing um, some counting in his head. You can tell, by the way, he's moving his land back and forth. So, two mana, phantasmal image. I'd like to copy. And so, in the copying, he gets the, the tap ability. So, taps down. Gindy passes. Helmet will come in. Will tap, Start but of you. course that will destroy. That that had that's got to be some part of Gindy's plan. He, he knew exactly what would happen there. So either he was using that for. Um, a tempo card, or as just a desperate, let me get another turn and see what I can get done here. Ghost Quarter uh, from Helmic, getting rid of the Moorland Haunt, so Guinea will not have the opportunity to generate a 1 1 blocker, right. essentially for free, using uh, one of the images out of the graveyard. I'm really wondering what uh, what magic he might have here because it doesn't doesn't look 
particularly good for former U.S. national champion. Indeed, 2009. Yes. Beating Todd Anderson in the final piece here this weekend. So, activate, equip. Malik Payet. Is he going to do it? Counting up the instants and sorceries. Shake my hand, says Charles Gindy. Thank you so much. And that, my friends, is what Rune Chapter's, Rune Chapter's bike does. This is, Woo. once again, once again, this is how great players win matches. They think through them. The tempo play right there was playing the phantasmal image, knowing that Helmet was going to tap it down and, and kill it, to get the time, to get the extra turn, so that he could get that, that six points of poison, those six 